my job is to bring people's visions into reality. And uh, for me, working with people and uh, working with them is a, a spiritual journey, a magical spiritual journey. Knowing that we shape our environments and that our environments shape us, what kind of environments do we want to create? And that's always my question. Uh, what kind of environments do we want to create for people? My first uh, uh, major client was a priest who wanted me to design a church for the liturgy. And so we went on a spiritual path together. Uh, at first, I realized that the altar was the whole reason for the space. So there's large stones that we put in the four directions and a square altar in the four directions, sitting on the earth open to the heavens. So in that way, we're connecting to the cosmos in the four directions, heaven and earth. And, that, and in this form, uh, people gathered in a circle. There was a spiral that opened to the east, the rising sun, a new day, a new opportunity, uh, a new era of the new liturgy. And that was uh, Father Merckx's dream. And uh, so as you see, uh, the altar is a symbol of Christ and the light cannon over the altar lit the altar in a way that it became the source of divine light in essence. And uh, I originally had thought of designing the stone blocks for the altar all out of polished stone. And Father Merck says, well, Doug, you have to understand, Jesus Christ, he didn't wear silk. He was a rough man who wore linen and leave the saw marks on the stone so that it truly represents him. And so uh, it was St. Mary's, the mother of Jesus, who named the church. So I. I wrapped the church in a warm blanket around the, the function uh, with, uh, with brick forms. But at the time, uh, I had a real challenge to figure out, figure out what I was going to do for the roof because I had to have a certain shape of the church, uh, a certain feeling of the church. And also, I only had $357,000 to build it. <laughs> So the most economical thing was to build the walls, but the problem was if I, if I formed the roof the way he wanted it, all out of concrete, because his last church burned down, uh, I would have a real serious trouble uh, with the budget. So I had to figure another way to do it. So um, when I, I decided, uh, when I was building the walls, Father Merck says, we have to really get this thing done. Uh, this roof is giving you a real problem. Uh, and how are you going to do it, you know? And uh, I, I said, Father, uh, we're walking together on a spiritual path. You have to have faith, you know? <laughs> so uh, what I did was uh, I, uh, I, I went and sat on Mother Earth and as my elders taught me, I became at par with a blade of grass so that I could communicate with all life around me. And there I, I uh, emerged uh, in the bushes in front of me it was a spider. And the spiders start building a web. And I started strand by strand, just slowly building this web, and I thought, that's how I'm going to do the roof. You're showing me how to do the roof, my brother the spider. And uh, so I was very grateful for that little life, that little spirit that gave me this information about building the roof. So I was able to then get cables, uh, steel cables with plastic coated concrete and uh, 
but I had to light cannon over the altar, and I strung cables, and then I put uh, a mesh underneath to pour three inches of concrete over the whole uh, roof, and then, uh, and then when the concrete cured, I was able to uh, post tension all the cables from the from the inner from the inner ring, and lift 250 tons of concrete up in space, which formed the roof. And so uh, uh, we got the shape that we wanted because it's a spiral form uh, that uh, actually enhances the acoustics like a conch shell, you put to your ear, you can hear the, the sea because it reverberates the sound back and forth. Because I needed the long reverberation time because the archbishop wanted me to put 12 consecration stones in the walls and he wanted to consecrate it as a cathedral. So I wanted it to sound like a cathedral, uh, you know, so it would say, Dominus Fobiscum, you know with a long reverberation time. So I wanted it to sound like a big cathedral, and so I used the acoustical shape to do that. So uh, that was uh, walking with, uh, with Father Merckx and, uh, and having my own teachings help him bring his vision into reality. And uh, I was asked by Prime Minister Trudeau, uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, to, to uh, build his vision for the museum. And I remember when he was presenting it to cabinet, uh, he was saying, I understand this design. He was telling members of his cabinet, I understand this design. He says, I'm, I'm a canoeist, and I see how, how the water w works and swirls and makes these patterns. And I see how the water sculpts the land and the rocks. And this is a building that represents our land, our beautiful land, and all the rivers. And it's on the Ottawa River, and it belongs there. And he says, I, I feel that, uh, that uh, this vision is what we need for the nations, to bind people together and uh, speak about our land, which we all love. And, and he wanted also uh, a grand hall so that all the cultures could be represented and uh, that we would get together and understand each other so that uh, we would be all treated in a good way. And uh, he wanted that to be the place where everybody would come and celebrate all the cultures of Canada. And uh, so to give that power, I, I uh, we had a Haida sculptor who did very powerful spiritual images. And so the images were north and south, east and west in the four directions. And uh, the whole hall opens to the east, the rising sun and uh, a new day, a new opportunity, a new way of thinking, and uh, east is the uh, power of the eagle. So in this building here, I was asked to do uh, by the uh, president of the University of S Saskatchewan in Saskatoon, uh, a place, a spiritual place uh, that would uh, teach the traditions of, of our indigenous people. And there, this is also a building that is in the, open in the four directions, heaven and earth. So, uh, but instead of facing east, it faces south. Because in their lodges there, where I worked with the elders, the lodges actually face south, which is uh, migratory uh, life that comes from the south, and so it is to give life to the to the whole lodge here. This is a sacred lodge, and here, uh, this is where people gather together and realize that if you if you connect yourself to the four directions, heaven and earth, uh, you connect yourself to all of creation. 
When you connect yourself to the source, you become truly a sorcerer. You become a magical being clothed in flesh. And in that way, you can, we have this gift and power of creation and we can create a better life and we can create a, a better future for all of us. So uh, the elders' teachings, I think, are the teachings of the future, not just of the past. So the grandmothers got together when we were putting together the indigenous architectural principles in Venice. And these uh, principles um, were defined by them because it's always the women that guided us. Next. So every step must follow a spiritual path guided by the elders in the community. Next. One must conduct oneself in a good way. And three. One must train oneself to always be in the service of others. One must respect people's own traditional decision-making processes. Architectural form is inspired by the spirit of nature. And next, when one plans for the future, we must plan for all of our life givers for seven generations. We have to respect our life givers all the birds, the animals, the fish, the plants, all the medicines. If we don't respect them, we won't have any future. Next. Knowing that we shape our environments and that our environments shape us, what kind of environments do we want to create? What kind of environments do we want to create for all of our future? Thank you very much.